Good morning, church. My name is Mauricio Restrepo. I am one of the youth leaders at New Life Church, along with Daniel Daly, his wife Liz, and my wife Sandra. It's a great pleasure for me to be able to share with you this morning a thought on a psalm. Um, as you know, we have been sharing the psalms in the last uh, couple of months during the quarantine, and I know they have been for uh, myself and my family of great benefit and of great encouragement. And my prayer is that today, this thought that I'm going to share is going to be encouragement to everybody who is listening and to anybody else who managed to have the opportunity to see it. The title of my thought is A Call to God, A Call to Perseverance. And that is the key word today, perseverance. Perseverance is the key to the house of God. I want you to close your eyes right now and I want you to imagine what is the house of God to you? What does it look like? To me, it's like a beautiful manor that we see in the countryside, in the Lake District or in, or in Scotland, where I've seen some of the best scenery I've seen in the world. And I imagine a beautiful stately home with many gates and gardens to enter this house, this home. I want you to open your eyes now. And I want you to listen to the psalm that we're going to read today. And see how David, inspired by the Spirit, gives us some of the keys that he found will allow him to persevere and enter the house of the Lord. Here is Psalm 40. Psalm 40. For the director of music of David. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud of mire. He set my feet on the rock. He gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put the trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside a false God. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planted for us, no one can recount to you. Were I to speak and tell of them, they will be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but my ears you have pierced, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, as you know, O oh Lord. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and salvation. I do not conceal your love and your truth from the great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me, O Lord. May your love and your truth always protect me. For troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Be blessed, O Lord, to save me. O Lord, come quickly to, tell, to help me. May all who seek to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May all those who say to me, aha, aha, be appalled at their own shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation always say, the Lord be exalted. Yet I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. Oh my God. Do not delay. Thank you, Sandra, Daniel and Aisha for that beautiful reading. I love the colours, yellow, blue and red for Colombia. Very patriotic. Thank you very much. If we move on to Psalm verse 1 and 2, just like Sandra was reading at the beginning. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard me cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. This reminded me, and this is the first key for today. And as you can see, I've got a few keys here. And this is our first key for today, the first key. 
A few weeks ago, we celebrated Easter Sunday, and we were, we uh, saw the cel the celebration and uh, remembered the the gospel, as they tell the passion of the Christ all the way up to his death and resurrection. I remember watching the movie The Passion of the Christ again, and remembering the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying. And this is our first key. Our own Saviour and Messiah gives us the first key to persevere. He knew that what he was about to do was about to change the entire world forever. And it did. But he set us an example. It says that his heart was so hard, so, so, there was so much suffering in there, that it says that he was actually close to death. He says on there in some of the Gospels that his sweat and, uh, and tears were like blood as well. So even our own Messiah, even the Son of God, who was man at the time as well, was suffering. But he knew what was the key that he needed to persevere for the challenge that was to come. And what he did was he laid down, he got on his knees, put up his hands and he set up a prayer. And he said these words, Lord, nothing is impossible to you. May this cup pass from me, but let not my will be done, but let your will be done. What he was saying, in other words, was, I give my heart to you, and I ask a prayer of guidance and strength for what is to come. Jesus knew that if he was to survive and persevere for what was coming, he needed God the Father to help him. And this is the first key we have. As children of God, we need to come to the Father in prayer to ask for guidance and strength. Just like Jesus changed the course of the world, many of us have our worlds been turned upside down today. I know mine has as well. I know people have lost their jobs. How many people have died? How many people know friends have died? So many things have changed in this last few months. We need to ask the will of God in our lives and ask for a prayer for guidance and strength. That is the first key. And we can have our feet on a rock and a firm place to stand, just like Jesus did. The second key we find in verse 3. So this second key right here on the same key ring, but we have another key right now. And this second key is in verse 3. It says, He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Now, how many people know the story of David? David had a heart of praise and worship to God throughout his life. And it's something that separated him from many people, from many men and women of God. But I want you to take, I want to take you back quickly to a story when he was younger. King Saul had disobeyed God and God had actually taken away his spirit from him. And David was anointed to be the new king, but he wasn't king yet. He was still a young man. King Saul was having a great anxiety and trouble and depression. He was suffering mentally and physically because the presence of the Lord has left him and a spirit was tormenting him. King Saul was asked to bring a singer so that he could play to him. And David was chosen, the son of Jesse, that he was a great harp player. And when they describe David, they say that he was a handsome, good-looking man, that he was brave, that he was a warrior, that he spoke very well. That reminds me of many musicians and of many of us today. We can all worship God and praise him. And there are some great singers and worshippers. There are good-looking men, good-looking women. There are brave men, brave women, great speakers, beautiful lyrics. But the one characteristic that set David apart from everybody else was a said of him that he had the Lord with him. And that's why Saul chose him. And every time David would play that harp, the, he would, that spirit would leave and he would be soothed. Doesn't that feel like us when we come to worship and praise God? David had a heart to worship. He wrote the words, the Lord is my shepherd, I should not want. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. These words of praise and worship, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul, I worship his holy name. Psalm 103. All these great worships inspired by the Spirit. David knew that the key to the house of God was a worship and praise of God in the midst of suffering, depression and anxiety because he saw it 
with King Saul those years ago. Now I wonder for us nowadays, and this is the next challenge for us church, we ask for prayer and guidance as the first key, but our second key is telling us to worship and praise God no matter the circumstance. Remember, David worshipped God in the bad times, during the modern mire, but he also worshipped God when he was taking the Ark of the Covenant to the, to the temple. David worshipped God no matter the circumstance and no matter where he was. His heart was a heart of worship and praise to God the Father. And that is what we are called to today, to persevere. Whatever our circumstances right now, I want you to reflect on what your heart is feeling right now. God is asking you, put a new song in my mouth, David said. Ask God for a new song if you feel that you can't worship and praise God no more the same way you did before. God can put a new song in your mouth like he did to David and in his heart. Now we go to our third key. Our third key is one of these other keys. So I take keys. These are my keys. So this is the third key for today. And we find that in verse 4 and 6, it said, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you do not require. Doesn't this take you back to uh, Elijah in Mount Carmel? We're talking about false gods and offerings in here in these verses. In Mount Carmel, Elijah challenged the 450 priests of Jezebel and King Ahab. And he asked them to a jewel. And whoever's God will light up the offering and the altar that they had built, that God is known to be the true God. So Elijah had his side, while the priest of Ahab, Ahab and Jezebel went first. They built the offering, but nothing happened. Elijah came and it was his turn. But we're not going to talk about God bringing the fire down because that is what people think is the key. That is not the key. The key is found in a few verses before when Elijah says to them, come, come, come see the altar. He calls the people who were watching, come in here, come and see the altar. Look at the altar of the Lord. It is in ruins and it has to be rebuilt. And here is the third key. The third key is the in the struggle of loneliness, offer up an offering of obedience and trust to ignite a fire. So in a shorter uh, words, or in shorter words, that altar was in ruins. And that altar is what we have in our hearts and is what we have in our homes. In what condition is your altar today, church? Or the young people, or the teens, or the adults, or the leaders, all of us right now consider how is our altar right now? I remember that a missionary came from Brazil to our previous church that I used to go to with my family. And she talked about greatly of the work that she did in the favelas in Brazil. And how there were many people with hearts willing to give to God. But at the same time, so many people, so many people didn't have an altar of God built in their hearts and in their homes. And they suffered greatly for it. And this was a great challenge for me because at the time I felt I had God. I felt I believed in him, but I knew it then, right there and then, I did not have an altar of the God built in my heart and in my home. Just now I'm sitting in this chair right now, imagine your heart has a chair as beautiful as this. And imagine right now, think, look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, who is sitting in the throne of my heart? Is it Jesus or is it myself? Is it my work? Is it my family? Is it my fears? Is it my money? What is it? What is taking the place that should rightly belong to God? Rebuild the altar of your heart and your home. That is the third key. Our fourth key is in verse 11 and 12. Do not withhold your mercy, David says, from me, O Lord. May your love and your truth always protect me. For troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more than my hairs of my head and my heart fails within me. David knew that another key to persevere apart from worship and praise 
and something that was very important to him because he committed many, many faults in his life was repentance of sin, confession of sin, and together with these, forgiveness. This takes me to the story of Samson. Samson, as many of you may know, was a man who was separated by God from birth. So his hair grew long and that, that, that as long as he never touched his hair, he never went to the barbers, as long as his hair was never touched, he would have the strength of like 10 or 12 men. And he did great wonders. Obviously, seeing a man with such strength is like watching a hero right now in our very midst. But unfortunately for Samson, he had a backpack. And in that backpack, he had a brick called Sin. And at the beginning, because he was so strong, he could continue to carry it and carry it and carry it. And it wouldn't bother him. But the problem with that sin and with the sin that we have in our lives today is that it starts multiplying. And it's like someone starts putting a new brick and a new brick and a new brick every single day until you deal with the problems. Until you bring that sin to the light. Until you bring that sin to God. Or as Christians, as we say, bring that to the cross. Samson in the end prayed. And I've got a beautiful image of Samson. As it says on the Bible, going to the pillar, resting on the pillar, and resting on Jesus as the cornerstone, and praying to God one more time when he realized of the sins he had. It says on there on the Bible that um, the Philistines took away his physical eyes. But funnily enough, finally when they took his eyes is when he saw his sin. And spiritually, he finally saw it. He realized, I've sinned against you, Lord. And David says on here exactly the same thing. He says, for troubles without, without numbers surround me. My sins have overtaken me. I cannot see. David knew to persevere. He needed to come in prayer. Into repentance of sin. And to practice forgiveness. Because he had received forgiveness from God. Like honey. Like a soothing medicine to a pain. That is what forgiveness is to us as Christians and to children of God. So church, we in this fourth key. It is time to take it out of the closet and time to bring our hearts just as we are to God and bring it to the altar. Samson prayed for revenge and God granted Samson revenge. But we don't need to pray for revenge because in the Gospels it tells us that Jesus, when he was on the cross just about to die, the words he said were this, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do are we practicing forgiveness are we practicing repentance of sin because that is an important key to enter the house of the lord our final key is found in hebrews if we go to hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 and 25 and then i'm going to read 35 and 36 it says let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Remember that. And let us consider how many, how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Verse 35 and 36. So do not throw away your confidence. You will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere. So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. He who is coming will not come and not delay. The final key, church, that I have here with me. The final key is the key to persevere in encouraging others in love and good deeds. To persevere when you have the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Many times David described as his cup overflowing. We hear Jesus as the water of life, like a fountain that never stops giving. We cannot hold the gospel inside us and keep it quietly. It does not work like that. We are cups that sooner or later are going to begin to overflow. And we need to start encouraging everybody around us in love and good deeds. And that is such an important way to persevere, especially in the current climate. Because we are encouraging others for love and good deeds. And we are showing the love and the sacrifice of Christ to others. And that encouragement will be returned to us. Remember on verse 23. Because he who promised is faithful. In conclusion church. I want to take you to verse 39. 
it says Hebrews 10 verse 39 but we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed but of those who believe and are saved and now the challenge has been set and this is the challenge that God has sent me today are we those who shrink back and are destroyed or are we those who believe and are saved so how do we do that how do we believe and save how do we persevere so we can believe and save well in verse 16 chapter 40 David says but may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you may those who love your salvation always say the Lord be exalted when was the last time we enjoyed and was rejoiced in, in God when was the last time we truly seeked him now is the time to seek him Lord while he can be found let's seek the keys together so we can persevere for he who promised is faithful I want you and I want us church to open our hearts pick up all our keys sword ready in hand and give God a call he is waiting in the garden by the main gate or at least in my imagination and in my heart because my the house of the Lord to me is like a beautiful stately home or he's waiting by the garden by the main gate in what gate is he waiting for you let us dwell in the house of the Lord forever I end with this church a call to God a calling to perseverance that was the title when I started but when I finished the thought God told me this to persevere is to call on God let us pray church Lord, I ask you, O Lord, that we learn to take these keys of perseverance and that they become a reality to us. Lord, that we have the key to ask the Father for guidance and strength for what is to come. Lord, that we pray to have the key to worship and praise you, whatever the circumstance. Lord, that we have the key to be able to come and rebuild the altar in our hearts and in our home. Lord, that we can persevere to seek so we can come to you in repentance and confess what we need to confess, O oh Lord. And also that we can receive your forgiveness so we can also forgive those who trespass against us, as your word says. And finally, the final key, O oh Lord, let me be an example of Christ, O oh Lord. Let us be imitators of Christ. Let us show love and encourage others with good deeds and love so that we may persevere because he who promised is faithful. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Church, I encourage you this week and forevermore to seek the keys to the house of God. I will be returning these keys before I lock myself out, but I will never forget to persevere is to call on God. God bless you, church. Have a great week.